Is there such a thing as too much disclosure in Scotch whiskey? Let's talk about it. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and today we're talking about Compass Box. Now, if you haven't picked up already, I am a bit of a Compass Box fanboy. Uh, so let me put my bias out there right away so that you're fully aware of it. I really adore a lot of the bottlings that Compass Box does. They seem to do everything the right way, and I'm a big fan. All right, uh, and today I wanna to talk about three different iterations of the Flaming Heart release from Compass Box, the fifth, sixth, and seventh editions. Um, but I also wanna talk a little bit about the SWA and the rules surrounding disclosure with whiskeys, because it's actually very topical for one of these whiskeys in particular. Um, so first up, uh, the idea of Flaming Heart, the idea behind it is a marriage between peated whiskey and French oak. And with French oak, you get a lot of lovely like dessert spicing is, is what I find. And it has a really lovely um, counteracting appeal to that peat. And, and so that's kind of the idea behind it is to bring those two elements together and, and, and marry them in a really fantastic blended malt. Now, um, getting into the controversy behind uh, Scotch Whiskey Association and Flaming Heart, we have to talk about the fifth edition. Now, the first edition of Flaming Heart came out in 2006, uh, is my understanding. The fifth edition was a 15th anniversary edition. So Compass Box, they started making whiskey around uh, 2000. That's when John Glazer founded the company. And um, the uh, fifth edition of Compass Box Flaming Heart was the 15th anniversary. Now this whiskey, um, it actually disclosed what whiskeys went into it. So from what distilleries they came from, it disclosed uh, what type of cask they came from. Uh, I think it even disclosed like uh, the size of the cask. But on top of that, and most notably probably in this case, is it disclosed the ages of each constituent part of that blended malt. Now the Scotch Whiskey Association, or at least one of the partners of the Scotch Whiskey Association, uh, filed a, a formal complaint because you're not allowed to actually disclose the information uh, because it apparently it's supposed to protect consumers uh, from a, uh, a whiskey maker claiming that, yeah, we've got 40 year old whiskey in this blend and it only being like two or 5% of the total of the whiskey. However, that's not what Compass Box did here. They just gave us the whiskey lovers all the information that we want to know. How is it in our best interest to have less disclosure, have less information as to what went into our whiskey instead of more? It's really, it's counterintuitive. I don't know who they're protecting with this rule, but it's not the Scotch whiskey consumer. If anyone, it's certain brands that are taking liberties with their whiskeys. So I, I find it very, um, almost counterintuitive, this rule. Um, Nonetheless, Compass Box had to work around this. So they did this in a couple of ways. Number one, they, they um, actually made a protest bottle, um, which I believe is called Three Year Deluxe in defiance of, um, uh, of the, these regulations. And this contained, I think it was about half, half a percentage of three year old Kleinleash. And then on top of that, it had 90.3% 24 year old Kleinleash. So yeah, it was a three year old whiskey they were only allowed to disclose the youngest whiskey in the blend. So it was a three-year-old whiskey, but it had over 90% 24-year-old uh, Klein Leash. Yeah, I like that. That was a, that was a pretty pretty classy and cool way to, uh, to deal with that dispute. Well done, Compass Box. Um, so I, actually that's a whiskey I'd love to try one day if I ever get my hands on a sample that, that would be really cool. Um, so in this, I want to talk about the fifth edition, the one that kind of sp helped spark off that um, that controversy um, with another whiskey called "This Is Not a Luxury Whiskey." Those are the two that were kind of in, in the in the targets of the SWA. Um, now, what we have today is a modern day iteration of the the disclosure from Compass Box. They don't tell us the age, but uh, if you look at a lot of the other bottlings, if you watch my other Compass Box videos, you'll notice that there's almost like a tree ring that they they have. And it's a pie chart tree ring sort of um, graph. And each section has a certain number of those rings shaded in. And so if you count those shaded in rings, uh, it may or may not give you the age of that portion of the whiskey. 
Uh, it does. <laughs> so that's how you tell how old uh, different parts of Compass Box blended whiskeys are these days. Um, and I just like that Compass Box is still doing their thing and just found a way to work around it. So again, well done. So the fifth edition of the Flaming Heart from Compass Box, the 15th anniversary edition, it's 48.9% alcohol. It's non-chill filtered. It's natural color. Um, all the great things we want to see. The composition of this blended malt, it's all malt, it's 38.5%, 14-year-old Kalila from American Oaks Hog Hogsheads. It's 27.1%, a 30-year-old Kalila from American Oaks Hog Hogsheads. That's right, 30-year-old Kalila. Nearly a third of this is 30-year-old Kalila uh, from Isla. Wow. 24.1%, 20-year-old Kleinleash from uh, rejuvenated American Oak Hogsheads. <laughs> uh, nearly a quarter, 20-year-old Kleinleash. This is uh, this is quite the anniversary celebration. And then uh, finishing off with 10.3%, seven-year-old Highland Malt Blend. That's a, a blend, um, I believe, of Kleinleash, uh, Tenenic, and Daluin. Uh, and it comes from a French oak cask. Wow, that is uh, astounding. So let's get to this fifth edition of the Flaming Heart before we hit on the sixth and seventh. Flaming Heart, fifth edition, 15th anniversary. And I got these samples from a, a virtual tasting I did with Kensington Wine Market. I missed it because of work. You probably heard this story before if you watched the other Compass Box videos, but I'm catching up on it now. I figured I'd bring you my thoughts. So that's why uh, I'm working off of samples here. On the nose, instantly, citrus, lemon, a waxy tone, some coastal vibes too, some coastal drifting like peat smoke. Yeah, like lemon zest. Hmm. Maybe the faraway smell of like a freshly doused campfire. Caramel, apples, pears, so like the orchard fruits are there. Probably from that Klein Louche again. Some baking spices in there too, but they're faint. Um, guessing from that French oak. Yeah, vanilla. Some light light touches from the oak. Though you can you can smell you can smell that there's some more age to this. Yeah, vanilla and leather. I really, really enjoy this nose. Let's check out the palette. This is creamy. It's waxy. Some cracked black pepper right on the, the tip of my tongue to start. Uh, the, the the decadent sort of dessert flavors are there with some caramel, leather, and like grilled lemon, like uh, a, a half a lemon that's been like grilled on the barbecue next to some like salmon. I can see that going on that same plate. Mmm, smoke, vanilla, butterscotch. So again, those dessert tones are there. Probably like caramel apple. really interesting weaving of um, the impact of the, the young Pete from the 14-year-old Kalila and the old, austere, um, almost earthier Pete from the 30-year-old Kalila. Um, if I didn't know the parts of this, I wouldn't be able to figure it out. Um, but knowing it, I'm looking for it, and that, that's what I think is happening there with that dynamic. Really interesting. Again, that sense of like a, a doused campfire, but you're just much closer now. That peat on this finish is just is just wafting. It's, it's filling my, my senses. It's like a sweet cigar smoke. Um, it's leading to an almost like a dry finish on the outside of my tongue. Um, dry but clean finish. This is a clean peat, actually. Then I think about it more. Some old oak. Uh, the palette was, again, waxy and creamy. Really great mouthfeel on it. And a really interesting job... Um, integrating um, almost the, the baking spices too from that French oak. There was like 
baking spice melded in with that vanilla. Um, so I'm not sure what dessert I'd have that I would have vanilla and like cinnamon in it. Um, but whatever it is, throw it out there. Um, and, and that's, that's what I'm getting. It's those two flavors put together. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's a great whiskey. Um, I have more to say about it, but I'm going to save it for now and we'll move on to the 2018 sixth edition of the compass box flaming heart. So as I mentioned, next up is the Compass Box Flaming Heart 2018. This is the sixth edition of the Flaming Heart. Uh, this one is, again, 48.9% alcohol, non filter natural color. All three of these are the same ABV, same stats in regard to integrity. Um, so the, uh, the breakdown for this one, and again, if I have the charts, I'll put them up on the screen so you guys can see it as well. But this one's 39.5%. Um, 19 year old Kalila from a refill barrel. It's 28.7%. Um, Deanston, 15 year old Deanston from a refill hogshead. Really interesting there. Uh, that's a departure. 10.9% 15 year old Klein Leash from a recharge hogshead. 5.7% 23 year old Klein Leash from recharge hogshead. I wonder if that's from the same parcel as the 20 year old Klein Leash from 2015, the age would match up. Um, who knows? Just again, interesting to speculate. Um, furthermore, seven and a half percent is actually a, from an old compass box blend, the Spice Tree Extravaganza. So sometimes they have remains of these whiskeys and they throw them in to future blends. Um, I think we're, we see that with the next edition of Flaming Hair. And we also saw that with the Kensington Wine Market um, 30th anniversary bottling. They used some of the Ardbeg from the original No Name Number One. So interesting there. And 7.7% .7 Highland Malt Blend, nine years old from heavy to heavily toasted French oak casts. What is a compass box blended malt if it doesn't have the Highland Malt Blend? <laughs> Seems to be in at least like 95% of them. So let's get to uh, nosing and tasting this 2018 sixth edition Flaming Heart. Oh, instantly. Okay, this is a, a, a brighter nose, uh, but it's more sprightly. It's it, it's a noticeably younger nose. And actually, I'm going to take a quick moment just to nose this fifth edition again. Oh, yeah. So if you, if you like a more lively nose, you're going to find it on the 2018. I really like that old austere, um, just, just aged, like, earthly earthly wisdom that you get with that 2015 older whiskey but this back to the 2018 sixth edition is a brighter nose spice and peat are really um working their magic here almost like a spiced toffee sort of thing apple and pear again i'm getting those fruits a lot in these whiskeys i think those are almost like hallmarks of compass box whiskeys um even the uh, lighter ones seem to have those orchard fruits they're a big uh, component maybe that's because they use so much uh, uh tanninic klein leash linkwood they seem to be really core um things that you find in those whiskeys so uh, i can see how they pop up so often for me anyways yeah big baking spice much more um yeah i'd say i'd say more uh, baking spice then on the 2015 fifth edition lemon citrus on the back end of this nose right now as it knows further yeah it, it, I get what what's here is I think more accessible than the 2015 but it's just not as deep it's not not quite as complex all right let's take a sip here Mm. This is much ashier, Pete. Yeah, much ashier. Um, almost like a cigarette, Pete. Uh, honestly, I'm um, like that ashing off cigarette right now. Leathery, sweet, spice. A touch of those waxy tones again. Actually, more than a touch. There's quite a bit. That might be coming from both the Klein Leash and the Deanston. I recently had the Deanston 18 brown label, and I got some of those waxy notes from it as well. It was really, really lovely. Uh, it's making me really reconsider looking at Deanston closer. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that Deanston's really exerting its influence on this whiskey. Um, that's great waxy, oily body and structure to this whiskey. There's lots of desserts. There's a ton right now of baking spice, um, almost like peppery baking spice on the outsides of my tongue. On the finish, campfire smoke, rich peat, sweetness, like creme brulee tones there. Again, those desserts are, are, are present. And this baking spice now from this French oak is almost um, almost a tad drying on the outside of my tongue. Sorry, I'm doing a lot of hand talking tonight, but um, yeah, on the outside of my tongue. Definitely more of like a, a drying impact. One more sip and then we'll move on to the uh, seventh edition, Flaming Heart. Yeah, it just seems to be a much larger impact from that French oak uh, compared to the 2015. It's still held in check by those fruits, those the dessert tones, and the peat. So it's actually, uh, it's, it's, it's quite nice. Um, it's just not doing the same sort of thing uh, that I got on that 2015. I think I'm just missing um, the complexity that was found in the older whiskeys that went into that 2015. But again, like... Um, Really nice spicing, a little bit heavy handed on um, the dry spicy finish here, actually. Um, that, that, that could be tamed down a bit to my for my liking. Interesting, again, more to say about this, but I'll wait till the end to give you final thoughts on all three of these. Now we should move on to that seventh edition from 2022. Flaming Heart seventh edition is a 2022 release, same ABV as the other two, 48.9%, non chill filter, natural color. And actually the Flaming Heart releases are actually named, or at least the name is inspired by a song um, by M. Ward. If you're looking for that song, you might wanna check out um, the, there's actually a playlist that Compass Box made to go along with this 2022 release. So if you look for that online, uh, you'll probably find that song um, on that list. At least I'd, I'd assume, I'd imagine. I should probably go listen to that playlist myself. Um, but the Flaming Heart 7th edition 22 release, it has 10 components to it um, in the blend. Starting with 20.1% 16 year old Lafroig from Richard Hogshead. So that's a great start. Lafroig is actually quite a departure from uh, Kalila, uh, giving that peat influence. So interesting. 17.1% 16 year old Glen Elgin from Richard American Oak. 23.4% Highland Malt Blend 11 year old from heavily toasted French oak. That's a big parcel of heavily toasted French oak, okay. 12.8% 14-year-old Balmenic uh, uh, from a first fill ex-bourbon. 8.1% 21-year-old Kalila from a refill bourbon. So you got some old Kalila in there too, interesting. 7.7% 14-year-old Talisker from Rechard Hogsheads. All right, moderately peated Talisker coming in from the Alice Sky. And 4.1%, 25-year-old Highland Park. Wow, that's a heavy hitter just to toss in there. Um, there's also some small portions of former Compass Box blends, as I mentioned from the last one, and these include the Flaming Heart 2018, so it's actually part of this blend, and uh, the Pete Monster Arcana, which I believe also uh, had Talisker as one of the malts in that blend. So that might carry over. And then the Nectar 15th anniversary uh, release. Really interesting blend going on with this whiskey. So let's get to the nose, the palate, and uh, see what we think of this Compass Box 7th edition Flaming Heart 2022. On the nose, it's immediately way spicier. And by spicy, I mean like baking spices, the typical French oaks or things like cinnamon, nutmeg. I, I'm distinguishing between those and like a chili pepper kind of sort of spice because they're still sweet. They're still sweet to me as opposed to like savory or even bitter. This is much more coastal too. I'm picking up iodine. You know, like you can sense the Lafroig in this, even maybe a bit of the Talisker on the, the, the coastal nature of this peat. And that's paired with the increase in baking spice. This is a punchy, this is a punchy flaming heart. Wow. 
Yeah, the baking spice is nutmeg. Getting like sort of like a coffee cake vibe too, like the coffee cake with that uh, like caramel syrup drizzle on top. But way more medicinal tones to this whiskey. Way more medicinal peat. Still that rich sweetness, butterscotch, toffees. If I really dig there, I could probably name them, but there, there's some fruits there and they're profiling more towards tropical, but I'd love more time to actually explore this whiskey in order to pick those out. There's actually almost like a spicy cola note to it here. I don't know if you've ever had like a craft like Coca-Cola sort of product that just seems to have a spicier tone to it. That's kind of what I'm getting on this nose. All right, let's take a sip. Hmm. Spice leads into sweetness, leads into peat smoke, which leads into more, more spice. Wow. And then that settles into a rich sweetness now on the finish. Um, there are, oh gosh, like some of the things I was pulling up there were cinnamon, um, sweet toffee, and again, that like coffee cake sort of vibe. Definitely medicinal peat tones. Mm. Now first thing getting medicinal peat again. Peat smoke, leather, some chili pepper going on now. So now not even so much baking spice in this moment, but definitely some like um, light chili pepper heat. But great oily texture on this. Once again, almost a more savory palette with a bit of earthiness too um, than the other ones that were profiling a bit more towards sweet. Wow, that's a great palette. And you can actually, I mean, it's tough to tell from these samples. I'm sorry I don't have more in the glass. But th this is actually a darker color too. I wonder if it's coming from um, those heavily toasted French oak casks where it's pulling more um, color from the wood or maybe even the recharred hogsheads. Um, yeah, a lot of spice. Okay, one more sip here. Yeah, this is a much more warming whiskey uh, on, the, on the, the swallow. When you finish your sip, you can really feel that additional French oak influence, that impact. And right now on the finish, um, that medicinal peat, it's like you've been roasting seaweed over a campfire. Not as extreme as like drinking straight Laphroaig, obviously. But if I'm attributing these impacts, um, it, it's coming from the Laphroaig. There might be a, almost a floral element to it too, a light floral element. Um, maybe that's some something from the Highland Park there. But this is a banger of a whiskey too. Wow, there's that word. I've used that often. Banger of a whiskey. All right, time to summarize these whiskeys and to finish this video off. So some closing thoughts on these whiskeys. First one I want to address, I want to address the 2018 sixth edition. Uh, it's certainly an enjoyable whiskey. However, when held in comparison to the other two, uh, <laughs> its other two brethren here, um, I just don't think it's quite up to the same level as them. Um, I would certainly, if I found a bottle at a good price, I'd pick it up. Uh, but at this point, I think all those bottles are basically sold anyways. So it, in order to find the 2018, you'd really have to, to hunt it down, to track it down. You might even have to look at auction. Uh, I'm not gonna do that with the 2018. I feel no need to chase this. I know that, uh, I believe Whiskey Mystery, they were kind of going back and forth on the 2015 and the 2018, which one's better. Um, I'm not sure where they wound up with that. But for me, um, the 2018 uh, places third among these Flaming Heart entrants here. Moving on to the 2022. I feel like the 2022 is almost like a return to form. This seventh edition is um, bringing something that's just, it, it has so much impact on the nose, on the palate, on the finish. It is not a subtle whiskey, it is a bold whiskey. And I really appreciated that uh, after um, almost a more timid approach with the 2018. It was excellent. Again, I would say it's a return to form. I would buy this whiskey. I would buy the 2022. It's available now. Um, it recently got distributed in Canada, so I can find this in my market. So I'm going to keep an eye out, uh, watch for a good price on it. Um, but uh, yeah, I think I think that's a buy for me. Uh, no, I don't think. 
I know it's a buy for me. I enjoy this profile. I enjoy this type of whiskey, um, the well-balanced and harmonized peat with spice. It's a great profile. Um, and the 2022 does a great job of that. Moving on to my favorite of this trio. And it's actually, uh, I kind of buried the lead with it, but it's one of my absolute favorite whiskeys that I own. Um, one of the favorite whiskeys I've, I've ever had um, just because it does so much so well. And I love this fifth edition, 15th anniversary, um, 2015 Compass Box Flaming Heart. You just need to look at what it's made with and then understand that it's actually greater than the sum of its parts. So it's greater than just the 30 year old Kalila, the 20 year old Kleinleash, the 14 year old Kalila. These elements, it, it's greater than the sum of its parts. It is fantastic. It is a whiskey that I would search out backup bottles of. I would look to auction if I had to, to get another bottle. I am so thankful and glad I do have a bottle of this. And it's something that um, I will enjoy for a long time to come. So the winner for me in this trio, this 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 shootout, let's say, um, is that fifth edition 2015 Flaming Heart. That's a fantastic whiskey. That said, there's no wrong choices here. There's no wrong horse in this race because they're all great whiskeys. That's coming from, again, a self-admitted Compass Box fanboy. Thank you once again for joining me uh, on Whiskey on the West Coast, watching this video. If you've had any of the Flaming Heart releases, comment down below what your thoughts are and what your favorite release from that series is. I really appreciate all the support, guys. Uh, if you can go ahead and uh, like, share this video, subscribe if you haven't already, if you're new here. And thank you once again for joining me. I'm gonna go ahead and take a sip of this 2015 edition because it's just so good. And I hope to see you again next time from the West Coast, Slunge. <laughs>